I haven't done one of these kind of videos for quite some time where I just sit here and talk. Most of them have been, I've been doing something. So I thought I'd just run through this. I, I've been inundated with questions and things that people ask me about FreeBSD, which to not put a finer point on it, are just either incorrect, exaggerated, or just myths. So I had a bit of a, a Google search and come up with, um, well, something that um, Clara Systems wrote. And I've got to be honest, I agree with most of it. I'm going to go through it because it's, it's quite relevant, especially today in 2024. So this is five myths about FreeBSD. So let's let's talk about this and and because it's quite crazy what people actually think about FreeBSD. There are quite a few myths surrounding FreeBSD, and I just wanted to to address some of them in my my own style. I'm not really gonna. This is just common myths. This, this isn't even like what I'm gonna do. I'm, I'm gonna cherry pick the ones that really kind of get my blood boiling, so to speak. Whether they're a good thing or a bad thing, and so I'm going to start with myth number one. Hardware support on FreeBSD is not great. It is and it isn't. What do I mean by that? Well, I have not come across any hardware that doesn't run FreeBSD, but I've heard of people coming across that issue. And I, I know that there are issues with Wi-Fi cards. I also know they're in development. They're, they're actively working on that. But until I'm not a fan of Wi-Fi, I make no secret of that. I prefer cables and you look at my desk and you'd know that I don't like Wi-Fi. I think it's slow. I think it's insecure. I just don't like it. But in the modern world, Wi-Fi is here. It's here to stay and we have to embrace it. Now, I'm not going to embrace it. It's just not one of those things. I'm going to support it and I'll put Wi-Fi in in my house purely for my phone and for various other devices in this house. In this room, apart from my phone, no Wi-Fi. I don't use Wi-Fi devices in here. I just don't. And as I say, I have not come across any hardware that doesn't run FreeBSD, whether that be when my desktop was new, it's a Ryzen 2600 with an Asus motherboard and a GTX 1060 Ti graphics card. It's not new hardware by today's standards, but when I got it, it was brand new and moving to Ryzen was quite a big deal and FreeBSD ran on it straight away. I never found an issue. I've never come across an issue apart from Wi-Fi, which I don't generally use on FreeBSD at all. Take what you want from that. Take it with a pinch of salt. I find that almost everything runs on FreeBSD apart from Wi-Fi cards. That's my take on it. <laughs> Let's move on to the next one. Myth number two. FreeBSD is only for advanced users. I know where this comes from. This comes from the fact that out of the box, once you've installed it, there is no graphical interface. I get it. You have to do that yourself. And if you can't read a manual, you're probably not going to be able to do that. Now, I recently tried a few variations of Linux, a few distros that are actually quite complicated to install. And I'll be honest, I didn't get on very well with them. In fact, one of them, I didn't manage to install at all. Is that mine or FreeBSD's fault or the Linux in that case? Not really. That's just how it is. FreeBSD is for anybody. The installation is extremely simple, but you are left with minimal tools. It is down to you what you do with it, how you want to learn what you want to install, what graphical interface you want to install. If you want to put KDE on it, put KDE on it. If you want to put Cinnamon or Gnome or 
a myriad of others, that's down to you. You've got to figure out how to do it. There are documents, there are man pages, there are guides, there are handbooks. I've said it a million times. The handbook is a phenomenal resource. Use it. It's there. It's generally up to date. Some things might be a bit behind, but for the most part, it will see you right. And if not, there's the forums and mailing lists. And as with anything that has human interaction, there are good and bad. It's as simple as that. I've never come across anything directed at me that's been bad on the forums. I haven't really asked that many questions. A few, mainly about porting software or maintaining software. But I also do see the odd occasion of people saying RTFM. And yes, reading the manual is important, but as an answer, I don't think it's helpful. Maybe instead of saying RTFM, maybe tell them where that manual is, and where that documentation is. Hot take, I know. So is it for advanced users? I don't think so. I think it's for users that want to learn and, and go on a journey and highly scalable. Yes, it scales with your knowledge as well. The more you know, the more you can do with it. Probably true with about anything that you find, but there you go. Um, so that's number two. Let's go on to number three. Yeah, this one. Oh. <laughs> As an advocate for FreeBSD, this one drives me up the wall. And it always has. And I don't really know why, because it's just... A small, a small Google search and you'll, you'll find this is just not the case and you'll find it anywhere. And that's that FreeBSD is not used by major corporations. Sony, Netflix, Google at one point, Cisco, <laughs> Juniper, NetApp. Most companies that have a product that are based on needing reliable networking will have at least looked at FreeBSD as their starting point. We're well aware of the, the shared foundations of Mac OS and FreeBSD. So Apple as well, you can include in that list. And for the people that don't know, and the gamers out there, if you use a, a PlayStation, chances are you're using FreeBSD right now. Highly modified, of course. And that's the beauty of FreeBSD's license is that you can do that and then you can market it and sell it however you want. I'm not going to get into any licensing stuff because hot potato I just I don't want to I, I, I'm not a lawyer I'm not a solicitor it's just I, I wouldn't even know where to begin with that so I'm not even going to go down that route there are differences in the FreeBSD and the GNU license of course it's well publicized a quick Google search will let you know don't Google everything otherwise there's no point for my videos what was that number three let's go to number four FreeBSD lacks software support, really. Apart from things that are, are specifically built into Linux, like containers, um, and a, a few very niche things, most of the software that you can get on Linux, and to a certain extent Windows and Mac OS, you can get on FreeBSD. You go through the, the collection of ports, and it's massive. In fact, let's have a quick look and see how many ports there are at the moment. September of 2024, there were 36,504 pieces of software in, in the FreeBSD ports and packages collection. That's massive. <laughs> yeah, boy. 38,000 pieces of software. Well, that's interesting. There were 38,000 in February 2020 and then 36,000 in September 24. I'm assuming a lot of that is just deprecated and been removed. But almost all of the, the common pieces of software that you would like to use GNOME, KDE, Cinnamon desktops, they're very common and they all, all run on Linux. They'll all run on FreeBSD. OBS Studio, I'm, I'm using it right now. I'm using it as, as my camera monitor. That runs on FreeBSD extremely well. There is a lot of software. There are some notable exceptions. DaVinci Resolve, not available for FreeBSD, which is a shame. That would be brilliant to have that. It's one of the things that stops me from moving to FreeBSD full time. It's a decent video editor. And yes, I know there are, <laughs> there are some linear editors, 
but they don't have the, the, the feature set that I like to use. So to me, it's not quite ready. There's a lot of software, but it's not quite prime time. So what number are we on now? Was that three or four? I think that was four, wasn't it? FreeBSD is not suitable for desktops. Now I know people that run FreeBSD as a desktop and I know people that run FreeBSD exclusively and don't run anything else unless they're testing or have a specific need. I'm sat in a hybrid group where I use, <laughs> how to put this diplomatically, I'm an advocate for FreeBSD. That's how, I, that's what I consider myself, but that doesn't mean that I blindly use something and make it work. I use what's right for any particular given task. For the majority of my tasks, as a desktop, Windows is the correct decision to use. On my servers, exclusively is FreeBSD. At the moment, I will probably use a Linux version for a hypervisor at some point very soon, not FreeBSD. I know that FreeBSD can run as a hypervisor, but I probably won't use it for that, but I will run VMs on it that are FreeBSD. Not really sure where I was going with that. Not really sure how that's relevant to what I just said, but there we go. So is it still relevant in this day and age? Yes, it is. There are a lot more. It, it's not an exclusive list that there are loads of things on there that are, some are correct. Some aren't a bit like anything really. Is it the best operating system to have ever been written? Probably not. Is it one of the most reliable? Probably. Does it have great networking? Absolutely. Does it fall down in certain areas? Yes, of course. But tell me an operating system that doesn't have any of those traits. Linux has issues. Mac OS has issues. Windows has issues. They also have some benefits. The thing that is encouraging with FreeBSD is that the developers and the core team and the FreeBSD foundation are all very aware of where their, their opportunities lie. They know what they need to do to improve. Can't ask for more than that. <sighs> One day I'm going to do a video about the FreeBSD Foundation exclusively, and I'm going to try and talk to some of them. Maybe we can do that at some point. And for now, I'm going to skedaddle because I feel like I'm just blurting on now. Don't forget to do all the things down there, like comment, share, subscribe. And the Discord server link down there as well. Let me know if it's worth keeping that open. I still haven't really had any answers. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. See you later.